Hello and welcome back to the second part in this Raspberry Pi XPMC tutorial. In the last part I talked about how to set up XPMC from scratch and how to add files. This time I'm going to go through how to wirelessly control XPMC from an Android device. So we'll look at the app that I used and how to get your Pi ready to receive wireless commands. Then how to set up the remote uh, so it talks to the Raspberry Pi. I do a small demonstration of the functionality and show you how to play files direct from the remote and lastly I'll talk a little bit about scrapers and what they are and how to use them. The XBMC remote application that we're going to be using for the rest of this tutorial is the official remote application. Uh, there are others available as you can see around here but this is the official one and it's free so that's the one we're going to be using. If you've got an iOS device, you could also download this. I can't comment on this because I've not tried it or used it. This one's $1.99, but I assume it does pretty much the same thing as the Android one does. So I've already got that installed, so we'll give it a try. To get XBMC ready to receive commands over the wireless network, first go from the home screen over to System and then Settings. In here, scroll down to Services and then down to Web Server. Here is the first option and you need to toggle it on. This option will allow control of the Raspberry Pi over a network. So make a mental note of the default settings here, the port, username and passwords etc. Now just back out to System again and then instead select system info here's the information of the hardware running XBMC but what we're interested in here is the device's IP address this is the network address which we'll input into the remote app next so either write it down or just leave XBMC running on this screen to set up the XBMC remote application First make sure that Wi-Fi is turned on on your device and connected to the same network as your Raspberry Pi. Then navigate through the menus on your phone to the app you installed and start it up. You'll get a message telling you that there aren't any hosts set up at the minute, which is what we're doing here. So click settings and then close that next message when it pops up. Hit your phone's menu button and then select add host. Give the instance a name, I'll just call mine RaspMC for now. And now add in the information that I said to make a mental note of. IP address, port, which by default is 80. Feel free if you want to change that but most people can leave it as 80. Put in then your username and password, which again by default are XBMC and nothing for the password. To start using your remote, press back from the menu screen and press use as remote. You'll see that there's a virtual touchpad where you can swipe up, down, left and right to simulate the keyboard's cursor keys. So if you press a direction on the remote, you should get a message saying that the remote is connected. Now it's connected, I'll zoom out the TV and get the TV screen and the remote screen capture both in shot. You've got this virtual D-pad and to select something you can just press once in the centre of the trackpad. Then you can just do anything as normal. Like before we can navigate through menus and press select to play files. If you press left, you get access to the quick menu, and to exit that, just press back on the remote. And instead of pressing select, you can just click play to start playing files. Once the video is playing, you can press pause and the command shows up on the screen too. 
I'll just stop this video for now. To get back up to the main menu, you can just press back a few times. And that's the basic functionality. To play files direct without navigating through on-screen menus, press Watch Your Movies from the main menu, and then choose the folder icon and navigate through these folders to the file you want to play. Then you can long press for more options or just press it to start instant playback. As before you can just go back and use the remote to control the playback just as you want. Sounds obvious I know, but the same goes for playing music, but it's more likely that you're going to have uh, a higher folder structure in your music collection than your video collection, which makes it easier to navigate remotely. Choose your track and it plays instantly in the background and displays information and controls on your remote. OK, on to scrapers now. What a scraper does is add extra content to your existing media, kind of like an electronic program guide on the TV. It adds information about the shows, movies or music in your library. Here I'm adding some more media from my server, just like before. But this time, instead of just clicking OK on this screen, I choose a scraper from the current scraper menu. I'm adding a TV show, The River, to my library, so the scraper I choose is from the TVDB.com. Then hit OK and Yes to refresh the information in the library. It downloads the information from the database and when you enter into that directory you can see that the episodes are named. Well, apart from that last file, not sure what happened there. And also a wallpaper is added in the background. After a couple of seconds a still appears from that episode and if you right click and choose episode information a synopsis along with some other useless facts appear. Now you can do this with existing files in your library by right clicking on the media and then choosing edit source. From here go through the same steps as before and select the database, toggle the first scanning option on and then hit OK. It takes a couple of minutes to do if you have a lot of files in the directory, but once it's done it remains on XBMC every time you boot up. Well, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope these two parts have helped you get XBMC up and running on your Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching.